Um, behavioral economists study human decision making, what we buy, where we live, how we choose to travel. And we show how that's radically altered by context. Designers make context, so we should talk to each other. Let me see if I can convince you. Here's an experiment. Supposing I give you 30 euros. You've got two choices now. Your first choice is to have another 10 euros for sure. Your second choice, on the toss of a coin, if you win, you get 20. If you lose, you just keep the original 30. Which choice will you take? Most people take the safe choice, the sure 10. Let me change the game. If I give you 50 and, if, and you have a choice between losing 10 for definite or tossing a coin over whether you lose 20 or nothing, you'll take the different decision. Most people take the gamble. In fact, it's the same decision. It's a sure 40 euros versus a 50-50 bet on 30 or 50. The decisions that we take can be radically altered by the frame, the context in which the decision is set. And this is true of everybody, however much you might think that you know your own mind. You think the choice is yours, but actually the context forces you in one direction or the other as a conjurer might force the card. Take government, which is often the person who designs the context. You think you choose whether you donate organs, and in every European country you do. But in the countries on the left with the low organ donation rate, your decision is whether or not to opt into the system to donate your organs. In the countries with the almost universal organ donation on the right, you have to actively opt out of the system. The default setting alters your behavior. Here's a man who knows something about defaults. If you make someone check a box to add travel insurance to an airline ticket, less than 10% of people do. If you make them uncheck it to remove the travel insurance, more than 30% of people buy the travel insurance. If you put these forms on the bottom of pension forms, where you're getting people to tell you what funds they want to invest their pension in, people will diversify their portfolio more if you give them this form than if you give them this form. A radically important decision that will affect your financial well-being is affected by the layout of a form. If you're trying to decide whether or not to undergo an operation and they tell you it has a 90% chance of success, you are more likely to undertake the operation than if they tell you it has a 10% chance of failure. It's exactly the same decision presented in a different frame, a different context. Which of these lines is shorter? Well, it's bloody obviously C. If I put you in a room with five other people and ask you all the same question, what will happen is, if the four people before you say it's A, more than half of you will also say it's A, even though your eyes are telling you that it's C. Our decision-making is hugely influenced by subtle little cues about the decision-making of others around us. It's not just people who actively tell us what they do, it's these tiny cues that show us what other people do that influence it. In shop one, it's about a 50-50 split between the more expensive digital camera and the less expensive one. In shop two, far more people buy the middle one because of the presence of the deluxe option up here that pulls everybody up. Why? Because it's signaling what other people do. In circumstances of great uncertainty, these subtle cues about how everyone else takes the decision affect how you take the decision, even if those people aren't present. Similarly, in order to get over our uncertainty, we don't just rely upon other people. We really prefer the present, things to happen for us now to give us certainty. If I give you a choice between 100 euro today or 105 euro tomorrow, most of you will take 100 euro today. At least that's what the studies show. If, on the other hand, I give you the choice between 105 euro in 31 days' time or 100 euro in 30 days' time, most of you will wait the extra day and take the 105. We don't price the day consistently. Now is more certain. Now is immediate and more trustworthy. And now is therefore something that we're much keener to rely upon. And it affects our decision making. That immediacy doesn't only have to be in terms of time. It doesn't have to be now. It can also be in terms of space. What's right in front of you? What's now there before you? If you walk into this building, the first thing you encounter is this lift. You have to go 30 yards to your left, through a door to encounter these stairs with this crap on the left, right? Almost everyone in this building takes the lift. Ironically, it's a state agency involved in public health that owns the building. This is in the RT radio studios where the lift is right by a very friendly set of stairs that has a little sign on the door saying free exercise machine. Almost everybody looks at that, looks at the lift, and goes up the stairs. The context in which you take the decision radically alters what you do, as the people who designed the cycle path on the Beckett Bridge should have fucking well understood. <laughs> if, if you advertise head-on collisions between two different modes of transport, you should not be surprised that people don't use it in the middle of the day. 
it would be the bloody Danes, wouldn't it? But in Copenhagen, 30% of adults cycle every day. The cycle lanes are separated from the pedestrians. Ask them why. It's got nothing to do with the environment, they say. It's because it's easy and convenient. The context shapes our decision. Forgive me an advert at the end of this. I am more exhausted than I am after 30 minutes in the gym. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.